Newsflash, they're not making any more baby boomers, okay? <laughs> Production on that model has shut down. This is not gonna be a caricature of the various age groups. I wanna talk about what each age group brings to you, because I think you can use that. I'm not sure you can use the other, and see how we can make the very best. But I do want to talk about three things. And the first of those things is what I call Haddon's first rule of multi-generational success. And that is stop stereotyping. People would prefer to be appreciated and recognized for the contribution that they bring to the workplace and not to be classified by something as irrelevant as the year in which they were born. So let's stop stereotyping. The second thing we need to do is to focus on the glue of common purpose. Let's talk about what binds us. Let's talk about what we do have in common. Thirdly, I want us to exploit, and I use exploit in the very positive sense, but to exploit the opportunities from everyone in the workforce. While the fundamentals of what people are looking for at work have not changed, the context in which we provide those fundamentals has changed irrevocably. And one of the biggest context changes has been the multi-generational workforce. This is nothing new. We've always had friction and issues between one generation and the next. The question that I probably get more than anything else these days is, Richard, what are we going to do with these darn millennials? Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do with them. You're going to hire them. Eventually, you're going to turn everything over to them, and you know what? It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be just fine. So I, I think we really have three options. The first of those is we can refuse to hire anyone under the age of 45. Or, here's one, we can try to change the entire nature and work ethic of an entire generation of Americans. The third thing we could do, rather than longing for the good old days when all of our employees were born between 1946 and 1964, <laughs> is to start adapting our organization to burn the available fuel. If we take these four groups and we see them as four different groups, if we think about, oh, how do we manage those Generation X people? How do we manage those darn millennials? How do we take care of these old folks that are teetering on off the stage? How do, we, how do we manage each of these groups? No. What I would suggest is that we think about how do we create an organization that blends everyone together. We can ill afford an us versus them kind of a, a way of thinking in any organization. No company has ever made any money from that kind of thinking, right? What makes you think you'd be the first one to do that? So let's get away from that kind of thinking and talk about an us, just us kind of an organization. Another thing that has changed is the way in which younger people tend to identify with a particular employer in a traditional sense, in the way that they once did. Robin Chase, the co-founder and CEO of Zipcar, which is a rent-by-the-hour car rental agency that operates in a lot of large cities, observed, my father had one job in his lifetime. I will have six jobs in my lifetime, and my kids will have six jobs at the same time. Now, why do I bring this up? It's because the entrepreneurial and the creative aspect of that kind of lifestyle is very attractive to many younger workers. And it simply creates an additional squeeze on an already tight labor force. Now, I'm not saying that you have to create an environment like Lyft and Uber and like hosting the trivia night, but I am saying you have to compete with talent who is very much attracted to that way of working. So I do want to leave you with a few ideas. I actually, I have about 200 million ideas, if that number means anything to you. But I don't have time for 200 million ideas today. I'm going to leave you with three or four that I hope will help you as you continue to make this organization one that attracts, retains, and engages the very best. 
We need to have respect for the boomers and what they've built. This company was built by boomers. It, was, it, it continues to be sustained that way. There's so much intellectual property, so much institutional perspective. Let's respect this group and also bring them, continue to bring them along in development. We need to capture their stories. I want you to continue your progress in terms of your progressive scheduling and so forth because this whole nine to five thing is going to feel very, very foreign to people in the not too distant future. So continue in that uh, direction. You will be ahead of your competition for talent when you do that. Younger workers, I want you to apply, to think about applying the new technologies that you are so excited about to age old problems that your baby boomer colleagues have been so familiar with already. Younger workers, be sponges. There's so much for you to soak up. Keep that in mind and always remember to get the best stuff from people before they leave. But also, younger workers, I would encourage you to remember that advancement is a process. And every one of those steps is critical that we hit each one so that you'll be fully prepared when you get to the top of that. Older workers, you want to leave a legacy. Think about all the great things that you've done in the, your career that's here. Everything that you've done that you leave here bears your signature. Well, you know, I think we all have choices here in this company and in others. And we can choose to feel threatened, to resent, to, uh, to um, be obstructionist, to shut down not to share our ideas because we don't want to give anything away or because perhaps on the other side we feel that our values, our ideas are not of value. We can choose that or we can choose to be generous, to share, to give, to learn, and to move ahead with a, with a sense of generosity. We all have that choice and that's a choice that I would challenge you to consider.